Hi guys, welcome. And who that? I'm Joe. And today we are going to look at some tight ends that are coming out in the 2024 NFL draft. We're going to take a look at about 16 of them and we're going to figure out how they fit into this new scheme for the Saints. Well, in my opinion, the Saints have a need to tight end. We'll pull it up right here. It's a it's a green lit tier. It's nothing too major, I don't think. You've got our starter in Jawan Johnson. You've got a backup in Foster Morrow. And you've also got an X-Factor piece in Taysom Hill. You also have a couple of backups, Tommy Hudson, Michael Jacobson. We don't know what those two guys can really do. We're gonna we're gonna give them a trial run this uh training camp. Maybe we'll see them in preseason. I look at the Saints roster here and you know, we're not sure what we have with Jawan Johnson. Okay, he's a wide receiver converted to tight end. And uh, he's been he's an undrafted receiver trying to make it as a tight end. He had a pretty good season two years ago. We signed him to a two year deal and wasn't so great last year. He had injury problems. And, you know, we've got this new tight end coach. So the tight ends coach knows uh, Clint Kubiak, and he's going to stick around. And and we're going to go into this outside zone run scheme now. And We watch San Francisco and what uh, Kubiak's done in his past. And, yeah, they need a, a good tight end there. Maybe Jawan Johnson's that guy. Maybe he can succeed in this scheme. I think if he's uh, if he stays healthy and he's utilized properly, then yeah, he, he could probably be a pretty good pro. So all in all, including Taysom Hill, I look at our tight ends and I'm like, okay, we we can make it. It's not a a drastic need, but we can make it. I would like to improve on Jawan Johnson, but I don't want to spend a bunch of big money in free agency. And you'd probably have to to upgrade from a guy like Jawan Johnson. Foster Morrow's a good backup, and I think he'll fit the scheme good as well. But we can improve a tight end. The problem is, don't want to spend a lot of money in free agency. And the draft this year, I give it a rating of a D. And the issue I have with it is the majority of the players here in the draft at tight end are, are, uh, are just average players. You know, there's something to be desired in all of them that they're lacking. And, yeah, you'll probably be taking a chance. I, I look at this draft class of tight ends, and all I see is a bunch of Lucas Crawls. And, yeah, you get a Lucas Crawl in here, and it might be exciting. You have somebody to play with for training camp and preseason, and hopefully somebody will make the team. Somebody will that, that'll show something. I like Foster Morrow, but athletically, you know, he's limited. And that might be an issue you have with some of the tight ends here in the draft. Something I noticed about the tight ends in the draft this year, I'm going to show you 16 of them right here. This is a big list of them, and you'll see half of them are 240 or less, which means that they're they're on the light side. Now, I'm going to highlight a bunch of them, and I'm going to talk about, you know, their face value attributes, and uh, you guys can let me know in the comments what you think. Are the Saints interested in any of these guys? And we're going to start with the cream of the crop, the top of the litter here, Brock Bowers out of Georgia, six foot four, 240 pounds. Everybody says he's a generational tight end. He's had this production in college that you know, everybody could use a tight end like him. Well, the only downside is he's he's only 240 pounds. So, you know, I think it's right, right, right there. You know, 245 is usually what I'm looking for at a tight end, 250. 240 for Brock Bowers. Everybody has this guy on the top of their power rankings. And he's such a good talent that you don't expect him to fall out of the top 10. But people don't use a top 10 pick on tight ends a lot. And if you need a tight end, this is the guy to get. If you're going to grab one, he's the only one worth grabbing in the first round. 
And there's been a lot of talk lately that he may last till the 14th overall pick where the Saints draft. Now, of course, tight end, like I said, is not the biggest need for this team, but I guess if there's a generational player that you can grab, you go ahead and grab him. But, you know, because he's a little light, just not quite sure if you want to spend that first round pick on him or not. Somebody will. Bowers is not leaving the first round for sure. I assume he'll be taken in the top 10. And chances are, if he's there at 14, the Saints will consider it. And it wouldn't be a bad move since he is the only first round rated tight end in this class. And like I said, will be in the top five or top 10 on the power rankings of anybody in this draft. So Brock Bowers is in play at pick 14 for sure. Now I think about this scheme and I think about all the players that have run it in the past, the tight end, and you don't need an exceptional tight end to do it, you know, someone with drastically different skills. He just has to be a complete tight end. He has to be able to block. He has to be able to catch. <laughs> and if he can move around and line up in all kinds of different places, I think it'll be beneficial in this system. So who else at the top of this board has a chance to, to fit in this scheme and work out well for the Saints? Well, the consensus number two guy in the draft is Jatavian Sanders out of Texas. Six foot four, 243 pounds. So he's right around the same size as Bowers. But what's hilarious is <laughs> everyone says Sanders is not the same kind of player as Bowers. He's not as strong of a blocker. You're not sure if he'll hold up in line blocking all game long. But Sanders has a lot of ability. And I look at a guy like Jatavian Sanders and I think about our new scheme and I'm thinking, you know, if he gets his run blocking solidified and then you've got a really neat piece here Jatavian Sanders is a pretty good tight end on the move split out running around and I think that you just develop him as an inline blocker a little bit more and you've got yourself a solid piece especially for our offense I would rather pass on Bowers with the 14th overall pick and take a shot at a tight end later on in the draft but if you want to grab somebody that's going to be a special player. Sanders could be on the radar here. I think he fits in what the Saints want to do pretty good. Um, the next rated tight end that I'm going to mention is Cade Stover out of Ohio State. Six foot three, 239. Now, Bowers is supposed to go in the first round. Sanders is probably going to go in the second round. And then we're looking at Cade Stover, who probably won't get taken until the third round and the rest of these tight ends, third round or less. Now, if you're in the market for a tight end, you might want to reach early. It seems like Cade Stover from Ohio State is that consensus number three, but it starts to get into a little a clump here. Cade is on the light side at 239, but he's a good overall player. I think he would fit our system fine. But the next guy that may be in competition – with Stover for that third tight end drafted is Theo Johnson out of Penn State. Six foot six, 264 pounds. Yeah, he's a big boy. And uh, he moves around pretty good for as big as he is. Now, he may be the highest regarded tight end that's got the overall capabilities here because of his uh, size. He's the biggest tight end I've mentioned so far. And, uh, you know, he's a pretty solid run blocker. And he can get in his routes and make plays as a receiver as well. It's hot and cold, but overall he's a pretty solid pick. I think a third-round selection with D.L. Johnson would be, a, would be a pretty safe bet for any team. I think Theo is going to be one of the first ones taken. We're going to have to keep an eye out on that. Because the third round, I think, is where these guys are really going to start flying off the board. Another guy that's got some good buzz right now is Ben Sinat out of Kansas State. Six foot four, 245 pounds. Nice size. I think he's a really good player. 
active player. You know, he's he's inconsistent, and that's the problem with these tight ends. Um, if they all play at the top of their ability, then, yeah, they're great tight ends to get. But I've got Ben Sinat pegged to be a third-round pick. He's a good all-around guy, and basically the type of tight end you're going to get. You grab a guy like this in the third round or fourth round, and – you know, you're taking a chance on this class, but uh, Theo Johnson and Ben Sanat are pretty well-rounded guys with decent size. And so I've got my eye on those two as probably the tight ends that, that are going to get taken in the third round pretty quick. Cade Stover, Theo Johnson, Ben Sanat. I think that's your solid shore, shore bets. A guy that you might want to take a chance on besides Jatavian Sanders for this team would be Johnny Wilson, the wide receiver out of Florida State. Six foot seven, 237 pounds. Yeah, he needs to bulk up just a touch, and he needs to get a lot better at run blocking. But he's a good athlete, and he moves very well. My issue with Wilson on the tape is that he's too inconsistent. He doesn't use his size the way that you would expect a big guy like him to do. And he just doesn't catch the ball consistently. So Johnny Wilson, to me, is a risk. It's neat to think about him in our offense, though, to think about him in that kind of a George Kittle kind of a space where, yeah, he can be a pretty effective physical specimen in routes. But you worry about that run blocking and the, yeah, Johnny Wilson to me at six foot seven. Just seems like you just run him out there, throw it up, let him jump up and catch it. He's not the best at that. So it's not like John uh, Jimmy Graham. It's not like getting a basketball player in the third round. And you know, Jimmy Graham never turned out to be a very good run blocker, but he was so good at contested catches. And with that size, you know, he was a weapon. And you know, put in pretty damn near a Hall of Fame career as a tight end when he was with the Saints. Can Johnny Wilson do something like that? I don't know. I don't see how Wilson couldn't be as good of a blocker as Jimmy Graham when it's all said and done, because Graham was never a very good blocker. But Wilson's way too inconsistent catching the ball. Jimmy Graham caught everything. And that's your big difference here. I would not take a chance on Johnny Wilson until the fourth round. I would take Jatavian Sanders, late second round, early third round, but I wouldn't touch Johnny Wilson until at least the fourth round. But a guy that I would consider a tight end for the Saints, who's another very special player, Jaheim Bell out of Florida State, where Johnny Wilson was the wide receiver for the Seminoles. Jaheim Bell was the actual tight end, <laughs> and he was smaller. <laughs> Six foot three, 239 pounds. Another issue here with Bell, you know, they, people want him to get five or 10 pounds bigger so he can be a, a solid tight end. And right now, Jaheim Bell's on the light side. But like I say, uh, uh, Brock Bowers is 240. Jaheim Bell's 239. You know, Bowers is a special talent, run blocks to an ability way bigger than his size. And so that's what you have to worry about with Jaheim Bell, get him better as a run blocker, but as a overall weapon at tight end, I'm excited about Bell. I think that after Jatavian Sanders, Jaheim Bell is the next on the list for me. That's got that, you know, special trait, wide receiver, really fast for a tight end. And you just hope he gets better at run blocking. I've got Jatavian Sanders and Jaheim Bell circled for the Saints as two players that can work out great in this scheme. But they're going to need time to develop as blockers. And I do. I have Sanders and Bell circled. Those guys would be great. And I wouldn't mind taking them in the third round. Like I say all the time, the Saints don't have a third round pick or a fourth round pick this year. So if you want to acquire these guys, you're going to have to do some moving or you're going to have to hope one of them falls. I'll mention two more guys at the top of the list of tight ends here. And uh, one of them is Dallin Holker out of Colorado State, six foot five, two 235 pounds. So he, once again, on the light side, but he's got nice height, six foot five. He's a very active player, and the more people watch him, the more people like him. 
Dolan Holker, when this first started, was probably a fifth-round pick, and now he's looking to go into third round with the rest of these tight ends when that big run on tight ends starts to happen. I like Dallin Holker as an overall player at which at six foot five. Yeah, he can definitely add some weight to his frame and probably not lose too much of his athleticism. I like Dallin Holker. I like him in the fourth round. And uh, I'm going to mention the, uh, AJ Barner out of Michigan, six foot six, 251 pounds. You know, Michigan had Harbaugh as a coach. There's a lot of pro elements that go into that scheme. And at the same time, you know, they are focused a lot on the run. And AJ Barner may be the best run blocker out of the bunch. Six foot six, 251. So he's a nice size, pretty tall. He could add five pounds easily. But I'd like to see Barner get a little better as a receiver. So as an, an overall player, um, I think you're taking a chance. I would rather have a big guy that needs a little work run blocking as far as hand placement and stuff like that than for a guy that needs work receiving. Okay, So a guy like Johnny Wilson who drops the ball, not not keen on that. And A.J. Barner is another one. Yeah, I love a good run blocker, but but if you're dropping balls, you're not – performing well, running passes, then running routes, then I, I don't want to deal with A.J. Barner. But, yeah, those are the highly rated tight ends this year. Most of them expected to go in the third or fourth round. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of more guys here. Eric All out of Iowa, 6'5", 250 pounds. Solid overall player. I believe he suffered an injury in college. You know, most of the tight ends that come out of Iowa end up being pretty good players. Well, all wasn't the number one tight end at Iowa this year. And they've retained that player. So, you know, all I, I believe he got hurt last year. And uh, so you're taking a chance. He's coming back from an injury and he was in the back of the depth chart at tight end to begin with. But he's got good size, and he comes from Iowa. So, hey, you never know. I would say fourth or fifth round pick for all. Now I'm going to mention three guys that are lighter. And we've shown you a bunch of light players in this draft already. These guys are probably too light. But they are listed at tight end, and we'll see what happens. We'll start with Oronde Gadsden out of Syracuse. Six foot five, 216 pounds. We have wide receivers heavier than this than this draft. Gadsden is probably going to end up a tight end, and uh, if he can bulk up a good 20 pounds. And he's got the height and the frame to do it, I'm assuming. But as just a wide receiver, if he can't bulk up enough to play tight end in this league, as a wide receiver, I just I don't see a lot of potential here. Clunky. This is the kind of guy that I would expect a team to get late in the draft as an experiment. And, yeah, I think he's a little too light to mess with. But he's an option. And another tweener here is a guy named Brant Cuthy out of Utah. Six foot two, 229 pounds. So this guy's basically the size of a Xavier Leggett <laughs> wide receiver. But he played tight end, and at 229, he's not that far off. Ten more pounds, and you'll be good to go. But, man, he's only six foot two, so it's another guy that's a tweener. And I don't know how much George Kittle weighs. He, he looks like he's a pretty light guy. If any of these guys can can get good at run blocking, you know, then you have potential because they 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 are built like wide receivers. You expect them to be productive running routes and stuff. I would have Kuthi a little ahead of Gadsden here, but you know he's short, six foot two. I mean, what you get out of Kuthi out of college is probably all you're going to get in the pros.
But I wanted to mention these tweeners because we do have moving parts in this new offense, I'm assuming. These guys may be in play. And the last small guy I'm going to mention, Marshall Martin the fourth out of Sacramento State. Six foot two, 230. He's right around Kuthi size. Same thing. You need to bulk up a little bit to be a, a sturdier tight end in this league. But at six foot two, I don't know how much more you can bulk up. So Gadsden, Kuthi, and Martin, all of them tweeners, all of them very light for tight end. But interesting pieces that the Saints may take a chance on as undrafted guys are as very late in the draft and to see what they have. And now I'm going to wrap up this video by talking about some scheme specific tight ends, tight ends that run a scheme in college that that could translate to the scheme we're going to run with Clint Kubiak. And first, I'm going to start with Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona. Six foot five, 245 pounds. These three players I'm going to mention here are going to schools that, you know, at times have run outside zone scheme. And so these tight ends, despite how talented they are coming out of college, at least they're familiar with a scheme that's similar to what we're going to do. Tana McLaughlin's pretty high up on people's boards. He, he may be a late third pick into the fourth round. And, uh, you know, because of the familiarity with the type of blocking type of tight end we're looking for, McLaughlin's high on the list for me. I'm also going to mention Isaac Rex out of BYU. Six foot six, 255 pounds. This guy's a perfect size for a tight end. And uh, playing at BYU, um, hoping that he has enough experience with that outside zone scheme. Being a run blocker, being able to run in routes, you know. Isaac Rex is a guy I've got my eye on for a fourth or fifth round pick for the Saints. The Saints should have about three or four fifth round picks in this draft. If we don't acquire mid-round picks, a lot of the players that we, dra we draft in this draft are going to be late round guys. And I have focused a lot on them. Isaac Rex, BYU, I think he fits the scheme well. Interesting piece to look at. And the last guy that may fit our scheme very well is Mason Fairchild out of Kansas. Six foot four, 260 pounds. Nice size, big boy. Get him in this scheme, in this system. He'll be familiar with what needs to take place and then We'll see if any of these lowly rated guys can uh, progress and uh, and be a decent tight end in this league. So that's the list right there, guys. Don't know if any of them fit well. Don't know how many of them will improve from their college days, improve on run blocking, improve on pass catching. Some of them need to put on some weight. A lot of questions at tight end, but that's my video covering this offensive position. If you subscribe to Rosenfield 10, I will be knocking out the rest of the offense. And until then, if you're a Saints fan, you're part of my family. Glad to have you here. Hope you enjoyed talking to me and leave your comments and I'll talk to you later. Who that?